Hi, Lonnie Mackley here. Just want to talk to you a little bit today about healing from childhood trauma. And it's a problem that many people have, and uh, nobody usually has a perfect childhood. And there's usually a a chain of pain. Uh, you know, your parents, you know, don't have good childhoods. Their parents didn't, and so they just pass down what they have or didn't have, and and so you grow up with that. So. Basically, everybody to some extent has trauma in their childhood. Things happen. Typical forms of childhood trauma might be physical abuse, verbal, sexual, psychological, emotional, spiritual, um, things like death, abandonment, divorce, rejection, withholding love, withholding affection, those kinds of things. They all cause uh, trauma and they kind of cripple you emotionally where when you get to be an adult it makes it difficult for you to love it makes it difficult for you to uh, you know maintain a proper marriage and to commit yourself to relationships because you're afraid of being hurt and trauma causes fear it causes a root of fear where we shrink back we don't want to be hurt again we don't want to be abused again and it can really uh, cripple us like I said as far as loving people loving our children loving our spouse uh, loving other people and serving them and so God wants to heal us from these things and most of the time what happens is we just bury them we bury these traumas and we do our best to kind of just survive and get through life as best as we can and but that's not the best that God has for you here's what God says in the Bible and this is out of Psalms 147.3. It says, He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And uh, that's what God wants you to do. That's His heart toward you. It wasn't God that hurt you. People hurt you. And uh, here's another thing that the Lord said. It's out of Psalm 34.18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and He saves those who are crushed in spirit. See, God's heart, His intent, is to help you. He, Like it says in Jeremiah 29 11 he has good plans for you he doesn't want to harm you and um, we have a hard time trusting God sometimes because of the bad things that happen in our life we you know uh, we think well why did God allow it to happen if he cares so much the truth of it is is that this whole world right now is like a testing field according to the Bible where God tests mankind to see whether he will choose good or evil and the only way that he can do that is is to allow them to choose good or evil unfortunately and a lot of people choose evil and hurting people hurt other people so you may have been hurt uh, by people that have been hurt by other people and you may be hurting people <laughs> yourself because of the hurt that's been done to you so that like I said that chain of pain goes on and on unless God breaks a link in that chain which can be you today where you don't have to pass this on to your ch children or you know take it out on your spouse or whatever you can be healed of this if you really want to like it says here the Lord is you know he heals he wants to heal your broken heart today and he wants to bind up he wants to you know uh, bandage those wounds and so that they can finally heal when we don't forgive people when we don't deal with things what happens our wounds our emotional wounds never heal and uh, like it says, you know, in the Bible, you know, in different parts of the Bible, that, uh, you know, the only way that we make progress in life is to turn to the Lord. We cannot fix ourselves, and that's the mistake people make, is we think we don't need God's help, but we do. And uh, let me just tell you a, bit, a little bit about my story, and uh, I won't go into great detail, but just about some of the things that uh, I went through that caused some childhood trauma. Uh, you know, we born. We're born. We had a, you know, abusive stepfather, physically, uh, emotionally, verbally, and um, some other things that I won't go into. And our mother, after our parents divorced, was gone a lot. She would go out and party a lot, until finally one night she didn't come home. And uh, what had happened was is that she was hit head on on the freeway by a drunk driver and killed her instantly. And so us kids were all split up we were sent to different family members mostly used as babysitters and uh, after that life just you know became un felt unsafe and I went into a survival mode I used a lot of different addictions to try to 
dead in the pain I felt and the fear that I felt and I was just completely traumatized and emotionally crippled by the time I hit adulthood and then once I started adding a lot of responsibilities onto my life it's like a house with a cracked foundation once you start adding weight to that foundation it starts crumbling and that's what happened to me because I had not faced or dealt with the emotional trauma that I had experienced in childhood because I didn't know how and uh, no matter what I did just didn't work and I needed God's help and that's the key today is you may think that you're never going to heal from this childhood trauma but if you ask God to help you he can heal you and like I was just reading uh, in the Bible God can heal those wounds that you've experienced he wants to do that for you it wasn't his will that you got hurt that's just part of life but his will is to heal you today if you want to be healed and uh, so that's how things went for me and there was a lot of other things that happened along the way and I, I, we all have our story we all have things that have gone on uh, but the truth of it is is that God doesn't want us to stay that way if you stay emotionally crippled if you hang on to your trauma if you don't forgive people what happens is you take that into your marriage you take that into your adult relationships you take that into your parenting you take it into everything and you can really suffer a lot of loss if you don't face it if you don't deal with it and addictions you, you end up with all kinds of addictions to try to deaden that pain and uh, it can just ruin your life if you don't face it if you don't deal with it but you're gonna need God's help you need the help of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is called the comforter he's called the counselor because what he will do is he will comfort you from the pain because he will live inside you if you pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit he lives inside you he comforts you from those wounds he comforts you from that trauma and he begins to counsel you from the inside out to unravel that big mess that you just can't deal with right now and he does it exactly the right time he doesn't make you face it all at once he knows exactly the right time for you to begin to deal with something and then he will help you to begin to uh, heal from it by forgiving people that's one of the ways that you are able to heal is you need to forgive and here's what Jesus said about forgiveness this is out of Luke 26 27 but I tell you who hear me love your enemies do good to those who hate you bless those who curse you pray for those who mistreat you and here's another thing he said out of uh, this is do not judge and you will not be judged do not condemn and you will not be condemned forgive and you will be forgiven so you need to forgive and you may not feel like you can forgive because either the person's dead or they're not sorry for what they did but when you don't forgive like someone has said it's like uh, drinking poison and expecting your enemy to die it's just gonna hurt you and uh, like I've heard it said is that either way people can live in your heart if you uh, love them they live in your heart but if you hate them they live in your head they rent space in your head so you probably they're probably not hurting they've probably gone on their merry way so you have to be proactive and go to God and ask him to heal you no matter what those other people do or don't do and um, you need to forgive them you like Jesus said you need to pray for your enemies and um, it doesn't matter uh, what the other person is doing once you begin to pray for them even if you feel like you hate them even though you feel like you want nothing but God's judgment to come upon them what will happen is that will begin to change your heart it will begin to cause a compassion to well up for you with these people and eventually you'll be able to just let them go finally you'll be able to let go of what they did you'll be able to heal from that and move on and uh, so prayer is really important and if you feel that you can't forgive then just place what they did no matter how horrible it is uh, of what they did sexual abuse whatever it is place what they did in God's hands and uh, let him judge God judges everything and uh, at the proper time and um, nobody gets away with anything here not us not anyone else and so eventually God is going to judge them for what they did and he'll judge us too we have to keep that in mind that we've done things to other people whether we realize it or not that have really hurt and traumatized them so we need God's grace we need God's forgiveness uh, just like they do so forgive them pray for them and leave what they did in God's hands and if you need to pray for them every day until you can start overcoming this because God wants you to be whole he wants you to be able to love people he wants you 
uh, to be able to face life confidently, but you're going to need his help. And he, you know what, he understands how you feel. You may not think that he does because he's God, but he does. This is what it says out of Isaiah. Listen to this. And this is talking about Jesus. It says, he was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrow and familiar with suffering. He understands. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised. And he was, and we esteemed him not. But listen to this. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. And listen to this again. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. He took upon himself at the cross all of our wounds, all of our trauma, all of our pain, uh, so that we didn't have to carry them anymore. You don't have to carry those horrible things that happened to you. You don't have to carry the pain of rejection. You you don't have to carry the pain of uh, the, the terrible things that happened to you, the things that you've been keeping secret all of these years, you don't have to carry them all today. It says that Jesus said to take his load, to take your load and put it upon him, because he was able to carry it when because he knows that we can't. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. He doesn't want you to have to carry your trauma anymore. He wants you to give it to him today so that you don't carry it anymore and that you don't hurt other people because of it. And uh, trauma is like poison to the soul. It's like emotional poison. And uh, he wants to cleanse you today. He wants to fill you with his love, with his joy, with his goodness, so that you'll enjoy life. There's many of you, you're absolutely miserable because you've just been kind of bumping along every day trying to survive life. When Jesus wants to give you life and that more abundantly, but first of all, you you have to be healed. If you had a terrible gash on your leg that wasn't healing, how happy do you think you'd be every day? But see, in our soul, our mind, will, and emotions, we have terrible wounds that are you know, causing this terrible pain every day and it's crippling us. And so God wants to heal you. So I just want to encourage you today to go to the Lord. If you're not a Christian, then pray and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart to forgive you of your sins and to be your Lord and Savior. And then pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, like it said in, like it talks about in Acts chapter 2. The Holy Spirit just gives you power to live for God, to be close to God, and to receive the things that you need from Him in order to live life and to be happy. So bless you, my friend. Um, if you go to my YouTube homepage, you'll see a banner on the top and that says Lonnie Mackley Ministries. If you go there, there's number of websites there that can give you further support. And while you're there, please consider um, donating in order to help others. I counsel a lot of people who are coming out of addiction, who have faced trauma, and who need counseling, so I counsel a lot of people. So your donation gives them the time and the help that they need to overcome what they're facing. And I want you to trust today that if you will give God your pain, He will give you His healing, and you don't have to carry what happened to you anymore. So bless you, my friend. Have a wonderful day and know that Jesus Christ loves you. Okay? Bye-bye.